Oh, let the high praises of God be in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's something about God when he begins to change somebody's life. He changes it the way nobody else ever could even fathom or think to change. Uh, you know, a lot of us think that we know God, but then when we just think we have him figured out, he always surprises us, and he, he does the extraordinary. Tonight, I feel just that extraordinary spirit of the Lord is in this building, and I want to thank everybody for being with us in the house of the Lord. All of our visitors, I know there's a lot of people here for the baby dedication. Let's greet all of our visitors with a round of applause and thank them. We thank you for coming to Abundant Life tonight. Thank you for coming to Abundant Life. Everybody that's not here for the baby dedication, thank you for coming to Abundant Life. We're so glad you're here. Everybody's here. A lot of faces we know, some faces we don't know. Some faces that are going to be changed after tonight. Amen. By the power of the Almighty God. Amen. I've been, this has been very heavy on me. The last few weeks, this message, I feel like the Lord has put it upon my heart to preach it a certain way. I'm going to try to lead uh, you into what God is wanting for your life tonight. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. Matthew 16 and 21. I don't want to start mentioning a bunch of names. Leave somebody out. And uh, I feel like I'm at... I feel as nervous as I think I've ever felt. Preaching. I don't know if it's the burden what it is but I feel like I feel like it's my first time man Matthew 16 21 I got a little bit of a lengthy reading it ain't bad from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he, meaning Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, number one, take up his cross, number two, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here that shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. I want to preach tonight. I have two titles. The first title is what I was going to call it, but I don't want anybody to think that I stole this message from anybody because I did not. I was going to call it the crosswalk, but then I feel like retitling it. So you can title it either the crosswalk or no convenient crosses. There's no convenient crosses. Amen. Jesus, I love you and I thank you that you always hear me and you always know what to do. God, I'm just clay, and I can't even preach right, speak right, talk right, or do anything without you. I need you, Lord, especially tonight. Lord, I feel an overwhelming burden on my heart, my soul. I feel a wrenching in my spirit and in my, in my innermost being. 
God, for the change of an individual tonight to be changed instantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody says amen. 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 God bless you. you. may be seated. His name was Mitchell Manning. Mitchell Manning. Maybe you heard of him. After all, he's been to Danville before. He came walking through our town not too long ago. Over the course of several months, he carried a 12-foot cross across America. He began the journey from Florida to California with the full intention that the cross that he carried was going to prove his faith for Jesus Christ. I was excited because I was driving down 36 the day that Mitchell Manning was walking down 36. I was excited to see him. He had a 12-foot cross, and he was carrying it on his back, followed by a vehicle that day. He had his belongings with him attached to the cross. There was something extraordinary about his cross. On the bottom of it, it had a wheel. Of course, you know, if I was carrying a 12-foot cross from here to Dan or from here to Plainfield, I'd want a wheel. <laughs> he carried it across the entire state of America. The cross, he said, represented his faith. He got all the way down to Seminole, Texas. I've never been to Seminole, Texas, but he got to Seminole, Texas. And he decided that he was going to do something. And in the meantime, he decided to put his cross in a ditch by the side of the road. In Seminole, Texas, while he went and did this thing. When he came back, the cross was gone. <laughs> he walked all that way from Florida to Seminole, Texas, and put his cross in the ditch for a second just to do something convenient. And while he did, somebody stole his cross. He covered the entire area, couldn't find it. He got a hold of the DOT, and they decided that They'd keep a lookout for it. He thought at first they threw it away, and they admitted they did not. And so he said, well, I'll, I'll find it. And they began a search for his cross. He found it. And when he found it, he continued his jaunt to California, and he finished his journey. I remember thinking the day I seen him carrying that cross, how much different it was from that of the Savior. For on that one, there was no wheel. There was no state of convenience. There was no time for convenience. In fact, Jesus was not given the opportunity to put a wheel on his cross. In fact, he was demanded to carry it, bleeding, dying his last breaths, trying his best to do what he was chosen to do. Jesus is talking to St. Peter, or as we know him, just the Apostle Peter. He was talking to him, and he said to him, he said, I... I want you to know something. I've got to die. I've got to make sure that you understand that I'm going to be killed and raised again the third day. And Peter, like any good disciple, begins to rebuke him. Who wants the person they followed for three and a half years to die? Amen. To die a painful death like the cross was out of the question. Peter begins to rebuke him saying, Lord, be it far from thee. It shall not be unto thee. And Peter turned and looked Satan right in the eye. Look past Peter. Or excuse me, Jesus turned and looked Satan right in the eye and looked past Peter. And he says, Satan, thou art an offense to me. Get thee behind me. You see, tonight I come with a burden for this church and a message of hope at the same time. Because there is no such thing as getting away from the cross it is appointed to every person that if you want to follow jesus christ and be a christian you first have to deny yourself pick up your cross and follow the messiah it is a satanic ordinance to think that we can have a religion without sacrifice a church without trying to at least sacrifice ourselves for the cause of the cross 
it is satanic. Jesus seen it as Satan himself. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. I come tonight with a message that it is a satanic offense and influence on this church to think that we will ever step to a place where Christianity can become convenient and we can have crosses without dying out to ourselves. I need a little bit of help up in here. This message is not going to be something that gets you growing crazy like this morning. Because Luke paints an even bigger and more impacting picture than Matthew does. He says everything the exact same way in his gospel in Luke 9. But when we get down to Luke 9 and 23 and we see the command of Luke 9 verse 23. He said to them all. He said to every one of them. If any man's going to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily that means from the age of recognition as a young person to the day of death we have to make up in our mind that we're going to come under the power and the influence and the burden of the cross in our own personal lives not just when we receive the Holy Ghost not just when we're baptized in Jesus name but we got to deny ourselves and pick up our cross and carry it every single day of our life and unlike Mitchell Manning we cannot put a wheel on the bottom of our cross we cannot make a convenient cross cross in this hour we cannot afford to have a relevant cross we cannot afford to have a cross that is cool for this next generation the cross is the cross and it's not supposed to be cool if i had tonight the ability i'd show you that the cross has no longer become a form of self-sacrifice Now, it's something people wear on their neck. It's bling bling. There's people wear crosses on their necks and they don't even claim to be a Christian. It's a symbol. That means more about self-indulgence than it does self-sacrifice. I can feel the reality of this message is going to sink in heavy. It took Jesus... The cross was was something that was demanding his attention. But it took Jesus going to the garden before he could ever go to the cross. I come tonight to take you on the crosswalk. I come tonight to let you know there are no convenient crosses. And that if you're not willing to go down the same road that Jesus goes down, you're never going to make it. First, you got to deny yourself. Second, you are not supposed to pick up his cross. You're supposed to pick up your cross. Every cross is not the same size up here. This cross looks a little easier to carry. Pretty easy to carry, right? I need somebody that's muscle man. Ralph, come up here real quick. It's pretty easy to carry. Am I right? All of you are still awake. It's pretty easy to carry. Come here, Ralph. Carry that. Now, it was easy for me to carry. It looks even easier for him to carry. Now, this one's got a Christmas tree base on it. <laughs> and it's heavy. It was heavy by itself, but now we got a Christmas tree base on it. It's real heavy. And then this one right here has got a box at the bottom of it. And to carry it around is even heavier. But here's the deal. It looked hard for me a little bit, but I picked it up. It wasn't too bad. Ralph, it looks real easy. I don't think I can get Schaefer or anybody to help me. Schaefer, will you run up here and help Dad, please? Run up here and help Dad real quick. Come on, real quick. Run up here. Come on. Show all these people your big smile. He probably won't do this, so nobody scare him. Everybody look nice. All right, help me out, Ralph. Easy, a little harder. The issue is not the size of the cross. That's changed. What's changed? The size of the person. So one thing I want you to understand is what was easy for Ralph 
This is a little harder for me. It's impossible for Schaefer. Do not think that just because one person has a cross that's harder than your cross, that this way called Christianity is impossible. Jesus never gives us impossible crosses. He just don't give us convenient crosses. What you need to understand tonight is God is not expecting you to go from zero to hero. He's not expecting you to show up and be a bishop in the church. All he's wanting you to do is pick up your cross and follow him. You don't have to pick up Jesus Christ's cross. That's too impossible. You don't have to pick up Pastor Van Loo's cross. That's almost impossible for somebody that's brand new in the church. But every single person in this room has to pick up their own cross and follow Jesus Christ if you're going to be with him. So before I get to preaching too much more, I want all of you people who feel like that you're such a big person in the kingdom of God to dumb yourself down just a little bit and realize that if it wasn't for the grace of God, there go I. And there is no big cross, little cross. It's just the size of the person that's ready to pick it up. And if you're picking up a little bitty cross and in the spirit you look like Ralph, it's time you get a new cross. Uh, Jesus is facing the cross. And so what does he do? Before he can ever be lifted up, he first has to go to the garden. It took Jesus three times to pray and kill the flesh. Jesus comes to the garden in Matthew 26, 36, a place called Gethsemane, and he says to his disciples, sit here, I'm going to go on and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which is James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. He had a very heaviness about him. If your cross does not bring a burden to your spirit, then it's probably not even your cross. He saith to them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and he fell on his face and he began to pray. And he said, oh, my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto his disciples and he finds them sleeping. And when he finds them sleeping, he wakes them up. Now, I want you to understand this. All right, if I just preach like I feel tonight is it okay if I just act like I'm ready just have revival here tonight I'm not trying to win friends or influence people tonight I want you to understand he comes to him he says unto Peter could you not watch with me one hour you see Jesus even though he was God he was manifest in flesh and his flesh was having a problem with this moment flesh did not want to die out to the cross and so he comes to his disciples and in a spirit of offense brother Jeff Van Loo he looks at them he said you couldn't even pray with me for an hour let me tell you something you are never going to have your best friends even understand the power and the burden of the cross that's in your life it'll never happen you might have great friends I have great friends in this room here tonight I have people I'm very close to but they will never understand the pressure of the cross in my life never his flesh ain't dead yet because he's offended that they could sleep at this moment you couldn't watch with me one hour. Now look, he goes back, the Bible says, and he begins to pray again. He tells them to watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. And this is what he says to them after he tells them to pray that first time. He said, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that's why messages about the cross is not met with dancing and shouting. Because everybody has a willing spirit. But nobody has willing flesh. And if you do tonight, you need a new cross. He went away again the second time. Prayed saying, oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy. And he left them this time. He didn't abrade them this time. He prayed Again, 
The first time he said, Father, he worded it like this. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless. Then the second time he said, Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, then thy will be done. And then the Bible says that when he went back and found them asleep again, he came back and he prayed the third time. And he comes to his disciples after the third time praying. And he finds them asleep. And instead of upbraiding them, he says, sleep on. Get your rest. Take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand that the Son of Man is going to be betrayed. Listen, I don't need my friends to go with me to my Calvary. All I need is myself to die out. I can't have anybody else dying for me I gotta die out for myself I gotta die out in my own way I cannot die out for so and so they gotta die out for themselves if you got a drug problem tonight if you got an alcohol problem tonight if you have a pornography problem tonight pastor can't die in that you gotta die in that if you got an issue tonight with your family you gotta die out to that you gotta pick up your cross you gotta die out to your own flesh He says, sleep on. He said, rise, now let us go. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. In the garden of dying out. Somebody say, in the garden of dying out. In the garden of dying out, you're going to have people that are not going to get your burden. And then you're also going to have people that are going to betray you. Betray you in the garden. And the crazy thing is, is they're going to betray you with a kiss. I want to give you a little understanding, Sister Steller. This wasn't the first time they went to that garden. In fact, I want to put it in your spirit that every time Jesus needed to die out, he probably went to Gethsemane. And the reason I know that is because when Judas wanted to find Jesus, he didn't go to the boat. He didn't even go to the upper room. He said, I know where he'll be. He'll be dying out in the garden. <laughs> And it's in that moment of dying out that your best friends, the one you trusted the most, the one you gave the money back to, they're going to come in and kiss you with the kisses of the seat. But you can't get bitter. In fact, Jesus looked at them. I, I, but I hope I'm not embarrassing you tonight. Jesus looked at them. He didn't say, Judas, what are you thinking, boy? He looked at him. He said, friend. Friend. You're going to betray the Son of Man with a kiss, friend? You see, if you're going to die out to yourself, you're going to need a friend that will hurt you. This cross thing ain't looking so good, is it? I'm going to tell you what else you're going to need in the garden of self-dying out. You're going to need somebody that has all the right reasons, but they have the wrong spirit. They come to prayer meetings with swords. There's some people here tonight that came to this church with swords. And this is not a place of swords. This is a place of love. This is a place where you love your brother. This is a place where you love your sister. This is a place where you love Judas. Even while he's kissing you on the cheek. Oh, I know this ain't a popular message. But if you're going to die out to yourself, you're going to need somebody with a sword at the prayer room. That has all the right intentions, but they have all the wrong actions. You need somebody that can give you the ability to stoop down when you're getting ready to be taken to the cross. And pick up an ear and put it back on somebody. And, and say, listen, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you live by gossip, you die by gossip. If you live by mischievous discord, you die by mischievous discord. This is not time for a sword. This is a time for the cross. This is not a time to kill one another. It's a time to love one another. The garden of self-denial is always going to look like this. Come here, guys. You, you, you four, five, six, whatever. Come on, Branston. You can come up too. This is what the garden of self-denial is going to look like. One second, it's going to be full. 
And then when it comes time where it's time to pick up a cross, one second it's going to be full. Y'all ready? You got to run back to your seat. You can't walk. One second it's going to be full, and the next second it's going to look like this. We're taking you, Jesus. And immediately, go. All of a sudden now, the garden of self-denial, you got to leave there alone. You got to leave there by yourself. And as you walk away, you got to realize that the only way you can go up is you've got to go down. The only way for you to have exaltation of the cross, it's going to take humility of the garden. Peter said, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. James said it like this. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit of the, that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Submit yourselves therefore to God and resist the devil. He'll flee from you. If you'll draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. I'm telling you, if you'll cleanse your hands and sinners, if you'll purify your hearts and you're double-minded, if you can just be afflicted and mourn and humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, he will lift you up. There's something about it. If you want to go higher, then you have to go lower. The depth of the valley is determined by the peak of your mountain. Though I make my bed in hell, thou art there. And though I ascend up into the heavens, thou art there. You cannot go to heaven until you first are willing to go down. I need a Joseph revelation to hit this congregation tonight. When you cast me into the pit, it's not you that's hurt me. It's not you that's wronged me. God is putting me on a throne amen what you meant for evil God is turning it around for my good the lower I'm getting the higher I'm going let me preach to somebody in this place tonight and relieve some of this burden for just a second Joseph had to learn to prophesy in prison if he was going to go to the palace and until you're ready to go to a self-denial phase and still be willing to be what God's called you to be and pick up your cross You will never be lifted to the palace. God needs somebody who will prophesy in a prison with the purpose that he's going to elevate you to the palace. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. The kisses of an enemy is deceitful. You're standing in your garden. You begin your moment of the crosswalk. Your friends will always leave you. I need, a, I need a Jesus tonight. Who wants to be Jesus? Who wants to be Jesus? Carson, come here. Carson, you made your pastor proud this morning. Come to prayer room. I was proud of you, bub. Thank you for coming. The Bible says that they get Jesus and they stand him before the Sanhedrin. And while he's standing before the Sanhedrin, the chief priests, the elders, the council, they seek false witness against Jesus to put him to death but found none Mark says it like this many bear false witness against him but none of their witnesses agreed together so it says Mark chapter 14 verse 56 there's a lot of people lying on him I can tell I'm preaching some of y'all right out of the cross (laughs) everybody was ready to pick up your cross in the beginning of this message and nobody's ready to pick up your cross now I'm going to tell you, if you're going to follow Jesus and you're going to do the cross walk like Jesus did, you're going to pick up your cross and follow him, you need to understand that when you get to the place of religiosity, people are always going to lie on you. They're just going to lie on you. They're going to lie because they don't know how else to condemn you. Oh, well, you, you know, and, and, and here's the crazy part. The Bible says many came as false witnesses, but none of their stories agreed. And finally they find two guys that looks like Caleb and William. Two guys that their witness agrees. And they say, this guy said he's going to destroy the temple and raise it up in three days. And when they said that, finally the chief priests have finally got two guys that will agree. They ripped their clothes and they said, that's all we need to hear. Blasphemy. 
blasphemy what further witness have we behold now we have heard his blasphemy what thank ye answer and said he is guilty of death then did they spit in his face man I'm gonna tell you ain't there ain't very many things that rile me up anymore than a slap on the face or a spit in the face something about it just gets under my skin it's a slam to who you are as it hits his face they've lied on him his friends have left him his treasurer and best friend has continually betrayed him everybody's ran away and now spit hits his face and it starts dripping down his cheek while the spit is dripping off his cheek He hears the symbol of the cock as it crows. The rooster's crowing in the yard. And he knows his buddy Peter is denying him. The guy he walked hand in hand with. The guy he took in the innermost part of the prayer room with. This guy is standing at the fire. I don't even know Jesus. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but friend... There ain't nothing like. I mean, all that other stuff is easy to get a hold of. But when your best friends act like they're not your best friends, something just cuts you to the core. I can expect some of these other guys. Jesus knew Judas had a devil. But Peter, he said he'd go with me to death. He said he'd be with me through thick and thin. He's in the garden. He's in the garden with me praying. We're on the ship together when the miracles happen. He's he seen me feed the 5,000 and all that stuff. And he's in by the fire denying my very existence. Anybody want to pick up the cross? There's no convenient crosses. Thank you, Bubba. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to let you be my gopher. Come here. You're going to come up here. Uh, we'll let you be Pilate. You can go over there. And you'll let you be Herod. Now, the Pharisees, Caleb and William, also known as Caiaphas and whoever else, take him to Pilate. Now, Pilate is the Roman leader here. He's the governor. I think these actors are just amazing. <laughs> He's the governor. And they bring him to him. And Luke says that they begin to say to Pilate. Let me read it for you and they can act it out. You ready? Let's see how good they act. Luke says, the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation, forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. You're telling Pilate, not Jesus. (laughs) Saying that he himself, Christ, a king. Now, none of that is true. He hadn't perverted the nation. He hadn't refused tribute to Caesar. They're lying on him. And Pilate asked Jesus, you know which one's Jesus? It's not a brother issue, is it? Okay. Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And I want you to get this. Jesus answers Pilate, Thou hast said. And they began to tell how he's from Galilee, and he's done all this stuff, and he's just this, and he's that, and he's claiming to be the Messiah, and he needs to be put to death. And when Pilate hears that that Jesus is from Galilee, he says, you can take him to Herod. I'll I'll stay here. You take him to Herod. So y'all take him to Herod. Man, Jesus is just like ready to go to the cross, man. We got our actors next year for more than just a man, Sister Betsy, right there. The Bible says when Herod saw Jesus, that's you in case you don't know. When Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad. And he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him. And he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he began to question Jesus with him in many words. But Jesus answered him nothing. Let me be very frank and very bold tonight. 
in this crosswalk. You can be friends and you can give hope to anyone that you can reach for and that you can help. We need to reach for every pilot. We need to talk to every pilot that has no idea about you or the Messiah or the way of truth or the life. But I'm going to tell you without any hesitation, you cannot answer the preacher killers among us. Jesus never opened his mouth when it came to Herod because Herod was the man that chopped off John the Baptist's head. And I've come to tell you I've got a lot of patience for people who don't know any better and mess up their life and they're all messed up with drugs and alcohol. But I don't have very much patience with people that all they ever want to do is chop off preacher's heads and see how far they can roll. Jesus said I've got nothing to say to you Bubba because you can't even talk to John the Baptist because you've chopped off his head. Chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him and Herod, this man of war, set him at naught, mocked him, arrayed in him a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. I want you to put Luke 23 and 12 up there as we make our way back to Pilate. And Herod, you can sit down. Make our way back to Pilate. Let me tell you, we're going to grab him. Now, don't be real rough because his dad's sitting there and he'll beat you up. We're going to grab him and take him back to Pilate. Here's what the Bible says, Bishop. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together. For before they were at enmity between themselves. The days that enemies become friends is when they're both trying to kill you. It's amazing how many people don't like each other until they just hate you. Then they all like each other because they hate you. But you got to have them. You got to have them if you're going to kick up your cross and you're going to follow Jesus. Oh, I don't like this message, preacher. I know. We like the kind of message that you walk up and you submit yourself to the gold necklace cross. The flashy bling bling cross. The cross that demands nothing. The cross that requires nothing. Except just showing up. All you got to do is wear that cross. And you look spiritual. You might not be spiritual, but you look it. But that's not the cross that Jesus picked up. His cross wasn't pretty. His cross wasn't beautiful to behold. His cross was just old, rugged, and decrepit. And if we're going to pick up a cross like Jesus, then we need Pilate and Herod to become buddies. I want to preach to the people of God tonight. You need your enemies. Man, y'all were shouting with me this morning. We're kicking enemies in the teeth this morning. But tonight, when I say you need your enemies, it goes graveyard dead. But without Pilate and Herod, there is no cross. You need the people who are going to ridicule you and persecute you and talk, say all manner of evil things against you falsely. You need them. So now it's time to sentence Jesus to death. Brother Adam's covered it a little bit. How bad does this guy need a spanking, Brother Allen? Pretty bad. All right. You ready? I'm going to probably tear up a good tie. Here it comes. Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. I'm going to flog him and release him. And here it comes. That was for cancer. That was for sugar diabetes. That was for blood pressure problems. That was for problems in the heart. That was for kidney failure. That was for AIDS. And then they got him and the chastisement of our peace came on him. And that crown of thorns came around his head and he started bleeding. His temple began to bleed so that my mind and your mind might have peace. 
All this is the cross. And then they bring him up. And they set him in front of everybody. And they say, as it's custom, I'm going to release to you a prisoner. You can have Jesus, the anointed one, the Christ, or Jesus Barabbas. You can either have the Christ or Jeremy Van Luke. You can either have the Christ or you can have Matt Adams. You can either have the Christ or you can have Shane Coffey. And like fools that don't know their end, they say, let his blood be on us and our children forever. But give us the murderer. And in a moment, they release Barabbas out into the crowd. You see, there's just going to come a time where you're going to have to go this walk alone. And sure, as he was walking, can you grab that cross? Because the other ones, I think, are too heavy and too awkward. Just grab that cross. And as he's walking up Calvary's Hill of Sorrow and the whip's still hitting him in the back, all of a sudden, he stumbles and he falls. And the good news is, is there's Simon right there. Come on, Steve. There's Simon. Simon's there. You see, Jesus is never going to allow us to pick up a cross without also giving us somebody that's going to help us. And while he's going up the mountain there's people crying and there's people weeping behind him and and there's people wanting him to to make out and why don't you escape Jesus come on why don't you just give up I mean after all you've been going to church for 40 some years and you've never had a year like this and why are you going to pick up your cross and follow him now why why whenever he's not healed your body oh God I don't want to get emotional tonight but it's going to be remiss if I don't say this my friend brother Klein who just went on to be with his Savior, who just went on to be with his Maker, he said to me, he said, I can't wait to make heaven my home. I can't wait to go be with the Lord. And then he and his precious wife said that he began to tell. They both told me the same story. He began to tell the worker. When the worker said, why would your God, if he's so good, let you go through something like this? He said, if there's for no other reason so that I can tell you about him and I can let you know how good he is I've come to tell you that he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb he never offered our victories without fighting he just said help would always come in time so remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and you're thinking about laying down the cross there is still a way of God you've got to follow him Simon brings the cross up the hill. You other three guys can sit down. I just want to get this in people's mind. Brother Coffee, can you come here? All right, Jesus. It's time for crucifixion. Now what I want you to do is I want you to hammer and crucify yourself. We're gonna. You ever play? All right. All right. You got your feet too, bub. You got your feet. Oh, your hand came off. You probably should have done your feet first. Let's do your feet first. Let's start over. It's all right. You've never done this before. All right. You can't do that one. see for there to be a cross somebody's got to crucify you somebody's got to walk up to you and put your other hand up there and say somebody's got to crucify you you might be able to do your feet you might be able to do your hand but at some point for you to pick up your cross every day Somebody has got to crucify you every day. There's got to be 
a dying out daily. Brother Bales, I'm not trying to bore anybody to tears, but I'm so burdened because we want crosses with wheels on them. And we want crucifixions that just hold us up with ropes. We want anything but to think that we actually have to sacrifice in these last days. I'm going to tell you, many of you have bought into the American dream, but you've not bought into the vision of God. American dream is real pretty, but it's not God's kingdom's dream. The kingdom dream says there's got to be a daily cross. There's got to be somebody who's willing to die out. So come with me, Elephant. Come with me. Let's look at this cross. Her name was Nona. And she just decided she's going to Africa. Sickness plagued her home. She almost lost her husband more than once. When she died, I got this straight from somebody. Her kids called a church and said, can we get some help? Mama didn't even have enough money to bury herself. Nona Freeman. So, so the cross is daily. It's the walk. It's the people that's got to take us to Calvary. It's the people that's got to put us on the cross. It's the people who've got to drive nails into our feet. I'm sorry, but somebody has got to put that on you. You cannot do it to yourself. So before you start cussing out every single person that's ever wronged you, remember that there is no cross unless you're willing to let somebody else nail you to it. You've got to make up in your mind that no way am I going to turn back now. People talk about me, it's just part of the cross. People say bad things about me, it's just part of the cross. Things go wrong in my life, it's just part of the cross. When I feel like giving up, it's just part of the cross. He's hanging there. He's hanging there. Don't let him fall, Brother Shane. He's hanging there. And they're starting to scream at him. I wish I had my drama team here. Come down. If you're really the Messiah. Come on. So you say you're a Christian? If you're a Christian, why is God not helping you out right now? Oh, so you, you say that your God loves you? Then why in the world are you up on that cross right now? And in the silence, they hear a sound. And it sounds like this. Abba! Abba! Forgive them. For they don't even know what they do. You see, on the cross, you deal with two things. You have to forgive man. The same man that put a nail in your hand two minutes ago. And you've got to forgive God. Eli. Eli. Lama Sabathani. My God. My God. Why hast thou forsaken me? I've went to the garden. My flesh has died out. But in this moment. I've got to feel like you know where I'm at. Jesus. Cry with a loud voice. And finally. The moment of release came. Father. Into thy hands. I commit my spirit. And after he said this. He gave up the ghost. The power of elevation only came after the cross of crucifixion. When the release of the Spirit finally left his body, it was the preparation for Acts 2 to come. But there's a lot of steps from the garden to the courts to the man that chopped off John the Baptist's head back to the courts to the floggings to the to the stuff that's being shoved on you and making fun of you oh come on king if you're such a king tell me who hit you 
if you're so bad and you're such an apostolic and you're so powerful, then why? But I've come to tell you there are no convenient crosses. And you cannot expect to get to the last days. Thank you, Bubba. To get to the last days. Thank you, Brother Coffee. And think, okay, now it's going to get easy to live for God. I'm going to tell you, it's not going to get easy to live for God. I've lost my crowd. I can feel it. It's not going to get easy to live for God. In a world where the California board, school board is saying that they're all not just going to make kids hear about transgenderism, but they're going to say that parents cannot remove those children from classes. It's not easy to live for God. In a time where it's cooler and it's more hip to be anything but a Christian. Anything but Christ-like. The cross is not going to get easier. I'm not calling you to an easy cross tonight. I wish I could tell you the whole story span of it. The cross. It seems like it's so big. God's going to make sure that you can feel it. I feel like when I look at Savannah, I'm looking at Janice Alviar. I feel like I'm looking right at her. Janice Alviar. I watched as Janice Alviar crossed the street with her husband one time. and The security camera caught her stumbling as her body gave out. And she fell in the street and her husband ran to her and he began to try to revive her. It's a cross. It's a cross. Are you willing to pick up the cross? First, you've got to deny yourself. The first step is self-denial. And that's the part most of us hate. Because self-denial, when all the other young people are going and hanging out and chilling out and playing football and basketball, the cross demands a prayer meeting at that moment. And when everybody else is thinking about how they can get rich quick, the cross demands how you can support a missions trip. That's what the cross does. The cross, when everybody else is running the opposite way, is calling for you to run this way. done I want to get personal there's times I've sat in my house and I've just wept cried because of stuff I'm going through you know what I'm talking about Sister Estella You feel like you're all alone and nobody knows where you're at. But the most important thing about my cross is that it's not his cross. In other words, I'm never walking in front. He never said, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and carry it on to your Calvary. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. And this is the same Messiah that said, come, take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, there's a sold Hebrew custom. Did you know that it took 300 women to fold the veil that was between the holy place And the most holy place. 300 women. Fold it up. 300 men and women. Fold it up. Did you know that it weighed so much that there's no way four people could pick up the veil? And there's something real crazy about the Ark of the Covenant. They were never allowed to ever get a hold of it. Without first making sure it had a covering. They would take that veil and cover the ark. Now the ark weighed so much that there's no way four men could ever pick it up. Never. 
And there was a preacher preaching about the heaviness of the gospel one time. And a Jewish rabbi came up and he said, you don't get it, do you? He was preaching about how heavy the ark was and the commitment of that. He said, you don't get it. He said, what do you mean I don't get it? He said, you don't get it. He said, the Jewish custom is that when those men would bend down to pick up the Ark of the Covenant, when they started to lift, God lifted it with them. And that's why they could walk all over the wilderness with the Ark of the Covenant on their back because the power of God was holding that Ark up underneath them. You see, the first call of the cross is simply this. you got to commit to the cross and then it becomes easy. You see, the first call of the cross is you got to understand that friends are not going to be with you, but you know that the friend of all friends is holding your hand. you got to understand that it's going to take somebody crucifying you to the cross. you got to be willing uh, to put the name Nails in the hands. You got to be willing to go through the pain. But the thing that's powerful is that the God of all gods, the healer of all healers, is the one who's already went on before you, who already has paved the way. All he's asking you to do is deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. It's a three step process, and it begins with self denial. How do you deny yourself, preacher? It's very simple. It's called repentance. It's called repentance. You got to be willing to die to yourself. The music will come. You got to be willing to die to yourself. You got to be willing to die. More shataya borobokosa. Come on, Savannah. Come on, it's time to get the missions cross. Come on, Savannah. Her name is Nona Freeman, Savannah. It's Nona Freeman. There's knotted pine here. There's, there's rugged areas. There's places that don't feel real fancy. But God's calling you to the mission field. And the thing about the cross is all you got to do is be willing to commit to it. And if you'll commit to it, God will commit to you in the name of Jesus. I'm not asking you just to base a burden on her. I'm asking you to empower her with the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh God, I hear it calling my name. I hear it calling my name. I hear it calling my name. Oh, I hear it calling my name. I feel like God is going to place something on you that was once on Nona Freeman's mama. Hey, Kay, you ain't going to fund me. You're not going to help me. I'll make a way. God will make a way. He'll fund it himself. God didn't call me to be funded by you. He called me to go. 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 I've committed to the cross. I've committed to the cross. I've committed to the cross. If you stand all over this building, I'm calling somebody in this place. It's been a while since you felt peace. It's been a while since you felt power. It's been a while since you've even felt a holy joy. I'm calling you to an altar tonight. I'm calling you to a recommittal. Paul, or not Paul, excuse me, Luke said, uh, you can't just die once. You can't just die in the 70s when you got the Holy Ghost. You got to die every day. When's the last time you died out, sir? When's the last time you died out, ma'am? When's the last time you died out? If you can't say Sunday, if you can't say September the 24th, 2017, then you need to make your way down to an altar. Maybe you died out this morning. Why not die out tonight? Why not recommit to the cross tonight? Oh, but my friends have hurt my feelings. You need them. You need Judas. You need Peter denying you. He's your best friend. You need him turning his back on you. There's no Calvary without Herod. There's no Calvary. Herod and Pilate are going to become friends. They're going to talk about you. But that's where the cross comes to play. That's where the cross comes to play. Come on, lift your voice, lift your heart, lift your hands, and call, commit to the cross. Right? Commit to the cross.
preacher. I want to be used. I want to be used of God. Do you know what the term used means? If you use a towel, you spin it. If you use something, if you have a used car, it's not new. It's been used. Come on, somebody. If you really want to be used, if you want to commit to the cross, you've got to be willing to die out to yourself. You've got to be willing. You've got to be willing to commit to the burden. I guarantee you when you lift the cross, God will empower you. You will go from a Schaefer size in the spirit to a Ralph size in the spirit. You will go from somebody where the cross is too big to somebody where they can carry it without problems because God will empower you. And the Bible says if you'll deny yourself, you'll be exalted. And I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. You will become somebody who can win the loss if you'll die out to the cross. As they sing, if you'll pray, find a place to pray tonight.
and keep having church. We're getting ready to baptize Christian in Jesus' name. If there's anybody, young people wise, want to come up here, they can. And if not, you stay right where you're at. Christian, come on, buddy. Come on right down here. Watch your step. Christian Taylor Conscious, by the confession of your faith and your willingness to be buried with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and now indeed baptize you in the name of the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ, for the remissions of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's it, buddy. Come on. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Come on, that's it. Just worship him. Worship him. Hallelujah. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, in the name of Jesus. That's it. Come on, that's it. Keep worshiping. Keep worshiping him. Hallelujah. It don't matter what it is. It don't matter what it sounds like. God, I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
now we'll praise him for what he's done i feel like he's just beginning right now to pour out his spirit like never before on all flesh come on praise him for what he's done tonight praise him for what he's done in the past praise him for what he's done for your family praise him for what he's done for your job come on jesus hallelujah hallelujah oh
to praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body and He changed my mind. He saved me just in time and I'm going to praise His name. Well, each day He's just the same. I'm going Somebody clap your hands to God and give him a praise in this place tonight. Come on, somebody clap your hands to God and give him praise in this place tonight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We commit to the cross, God. We commit to the cross, God. We commit to the cross, God. We commit to the cross. I wish somebody would lift their voice one more time. This is what it's all about tonight. This is what it's all about tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, she had a movie at the time. Yeah, 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 Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mm. Oh, you don't know, like I know, what he's done for me. You don't know, like I know, how he set me free. You don't know, like I know, how he brought me out. You don't know, like I know, how he saved my soul. Somebody praise him right now because nobody else knows like you know what he's done for you in this place. Praise God. Praise God. So thankful for all the visitors that's here. Let's give our visitors another round of applause. We're going to turn on some music. You can stay as long as you want. Pray as long as you want. You can have as much church as you want. This is what it's all about. Don't forget next week, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, prayer time, 730 church. God bless you. Don't forget to continue to pray for all the people that are in the Klein family. And don't forget Friday's youth chapel and Saturday is memorial service. It's a full week. I love you. You're dismissed. God bless you.